Hey, everybody, Doc Robin here. Welcome back to my channel. This is Mindset Rx. It's your place to be if you are an emotionally intelligent leader and you're ready to set the tone for a positive, productive, and purposeful week, month, year, life, legacy. As I say, all the things. It's so important every week that we gather. This is becoming one of my favorite appointments that I have with myself, with my, with my wisdom, with you all. And today I'm talking about the missing link between you and your next promotion or your next job, whatever's next for you. If you haven't quite materialized that thing yet, this is the episode that you're going to want to listen real carefully to, because it's not what you think. Um, just to give you a little bit of context, you know, I've been, I have a PhD in psychology. Um, when I was in grad school, I focused primarily on vocational psychology, how people make decisions about their careers and specifically how smart, intuitive, creative people make decisions about their careers. So this has been a long time. I've been doing this work professionally, but personally from a job finding perspective. It's just always been something I've been really, really good at. And uh, by the way, if you're here with me live, I'm happy to greet you this morning. And I see that Tony's here. So it's nice to see you this morning. And if you are live with me, say hello and let me know. What do you think is holding you back from your next thing? It's different for everybody. But as I've gone through my own job searches, as I've gone through working with really high level professionals and experts on landing their next jobs, their promotions. There are a couple of things that ring true for almost everybody. And so I wanted to share those things with you today. These are observations and assessments that I've made over the course of the last 15 years or so as I've been doing this, this work with adult humans, although it works for everybody. And um, it's something that you know, do you, do you have a thing where if you were given that challenge, whatever that challenge is, every single time you knew that you would, if not win, you would definitely come in in the top three, whatever that is, whether it's, you know, rock, paper, scissors, championship of the world. Uh, for me, it's helping really smart, talented, intuitive people find their next positions and get their promotions and get the things that they really want to experience in their lives. And just for context, I'm reading some of the comments that are coming through. Michael says, and hi, Michael, it's nice to have you live here with us today. Sometimes the hard part is the waiting. I'm going to take that on too, because that's, that is, it is the hard part, the waiting and not knowing if you're waiting too long and trying to figure out how long to wait there's a level of impatience that comes with that for sure. So I'm gonna to try to take that on before we end our time together today. So I wanted to start with a story from my own career. And this took place, gosh, it was 2000. So I, I finished my PhD in 2008. So it's been however 13 years ago. And I decided I was going to move to Arizona and from Kansas. And I decided that I was not gonna move unless I had a job, but not just any job. I decided I wanted the best possible job for myself coming out with my PhD in psychology. And so I did all the things, polished my CV, sent out notifications to everybody I knew in Arizona from all of the contacts I had made during graduate school. So I activated my network. And that was at a time before, like right around the time LinkedIn was kind of coming online. So I didn't do a whole lot with that just because it wasn't yet an important piece of the job search puzzle. But I had really targeted that I wanted a university position as a psychologist. And I had all of this knowledge and awareness and ability actually, proven ability to create the positions, to create the, the opportunities that I wanted for myself. I had proven that to myself over and over again throughout my life. And it was about I don't know, six weeks before my postdoc was up, 
and I didn't have a job yet. And I was getting real nervous. I had actually turned down a job at the university in Missouri where I was training at the time in my mm-hmm. postdoc and said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Arizona no matter what, but I'm going and I'm going to have a job. And some of you have heard me tell the story today, but it's one of those kind of pivotal moments for me that I like to share when it comes to waiting and, and creating the things that you want for yourself, for your career. And, um, so I don't, it was like July of 2008 and I was at my mentor's farm in Kansas. We were getting ready to host a group of Italian executives for a team build that day. And I had a meltdown to end all meltdowns. And y'all, when I cry, when I have a meltdown like that, it's not like pretty, you know, movie star tears or anything like that. There's snot and there's gnashing of teeth and there's sobbing and there's heaving and, I was, it's a little, I get a little dramatic. Let's just put it that way. And uh, my mentor, Barb, knows this about me. And she was just doing what psychologists do, making very affirming, calming sounds, just letting me process my experience. And, you know, I talked about my deepest fears. I talked about my deepest fears during that, during that emotional release. My deepest fears being things like, what if I don't? get a job. I already turned down two jobs actually that um, were done deals for me. I could have definitely had either of the jobs that I turned down. Um, What would happen? I asked, what will happen to me if I don't have a job? I had student loans. I was single. I didn't have any backup plan. And I think that's one of the things that we struggle with, right? As professionals, what will happen to me? And there's this, even if it's not true, and 98.7% of the time, I just made that statistic up on the spot. Not, so much of the time, we're not going to become homeless living in a van down by the river. There are so many steps in between where I was and where that was. And probably for, for those of you who are kind of feeling that same vibe as I did all those years ago, there are so many steps in between where you are now with your job and where 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 you're headed and the the story of I'm going to live in a van down by the river and be homeless. It's a it's something that is I think most people would call it an irrational fear, but it's so it's so common, right? For for us to have that, especially high achievers, I think that it kind of scares us into doing the work that's necessary in order to land the position that we really want so that this terrible thing doesn't happen to us. So at any rate, after my emotional meltdown, we had the the, uh, workshop, the, the team build with the Italian executives. At the end of the day, I checked my phone and there was a message from a man at Arizona State University, the director of one of the psychology centers there. And he told me on this message, he said, your CV came across my email. Uh, My psychologist has left. There were only two psychologists at that campus at the time. And he said, and I can do a focused hire and I would like for you to come and interview for this position. And so I went, interviewed, you know, was offered the position, got the position. And really that set the tone for my career. Everything that I've done since then has really been influenced, informed by that first job that I had coming out of graduate school. So I share this because I think it's important for you to understand that when I talk about the things that stop us from landing our next positions, from getting our next promotions, I not only have like a working knowledge of it from other people's experiences, but I also have my own personal experiences of what it's like, what it's like to be in that in-between space be in that gap between where where I am now and where I want to be with my new position. So with that in mind, then, I want to share some things that I've noticed are the missing links for people who are looking for their next positions. By the way, I don't know if there's ever been a better time than right now for technical professionals, for experts to be looking for their next job. We're in the middle of the great resignation. The great reshuffle is something else I've seen come up recently in social media. 
And there is something about this time where everybody is asking the question of, is this all there is? And what is meant for me next? I know I'm meant to be doing something besides what I'm doing right now. Is this company even in alignment with my values? Am I going to be able to contribute in the way that I want to contribute? So if you're asking those questions, I just want to give the word of encouragement that this is a perfect time to be answer, a, answering those questions and finding a position that's exactly right for you. The, the, the truth of it is that what got you here to this position that you're in right now is not going to be sufficient. It's necessary, but it's not sufficient to get you to the next level. So we're gonna talk about the gap today. And the gap is that missing link. The first one I wanna talk about is this one, competing priorities. And I see this a lot with, there can, competing priorities can be anything really. But I see this a lot with parents who have, it doesn't seem to even matter how old their kids are, but um, the children have needs that their parents feel obligated and required to fulfill and have a story playing in their head that they can't get their next job until their kid reaches a certain stage. And in some cases that's true. I mean, there are some practical reasons that that would be the case, but also I think we make up stories in our heads that put barriers between us and the next thing. So competing priority, children, family, my brother's going through something. My dad is going through something. I don't want to start something new because of these other things that are going on in my life. And certainly those are legit reasons. A few years ago, my husband had prostate cancer, pretty significant prostate cancer. And that would, that would have been a time where I wouldn't have been so interested in seeking out something new necessarily. In fact, what I did was double down on what I was already doing with my work and really set down roots in my work as a consultant, as an executive coach. So I use that not to make a leap into something new, but to double down. So if you do have a competing priority, it may not be the right time to look for a position. But if you're using another priority as an excuse for why it's not happening, if you're using a competing priority as a distraction from focusing on this thing that you really, really want for yourself, if you're using a competing priority to, you know, place the blame on, not that you do that intentionally or consciously, but sometimes it can feel a little bit like that. If it weren't for this thing, then I would do this other thing over here. Or if you're just somebody who's used to putting your own needs, wants, desires in the back burner, and prioritizing other people's needs, wants, desires ahead of your own. Those, that's a missing link then. And that's something that I would say, need to have a conversation about, need to look at how you can transform those competing priorities and let those be rocket fuel for your next thing. Because the, the truth is that when you're doing the work that you came here to do, your heart's work, when you are living into your heart's mission, Everybody benefits from that. It can appear on the surface as though people benefit from you prioritizing their needs over your own. But you've heard me use this analogy before if you've ever, if you've been around for a while, it's just like being on an airplane. Whose mask do you put on first? If you need to put a mask on, you have to put your own on first. That benefits more people than running around the plane, putting everybody else's masks on them before you put yours on. Because at that point, you've run out of oxygen. Everybody else survives and now. Maybe you don't. So a word of encouragement about those competing priorities. When you prioritize your desire, your heart's desire, your most deeply held dreams. Everybody benefits from that. We don't live in a culture that teaches that very well. This is an area of growth.
All right, the next one that's a missing link is burnout. And there are a lot of different ways that people burn out. A lot of times it has to do with compassion fatigue, crisis fatigue. We become kind of disconnected from the world around us, disconnected from caring so much because there's so much. But for you to really land the, the position that's meant for you, you've got to bring your whole best self to the table. And anything that's getting in the way around burnout is going to make your energy, your spirit, your personality less effective and less magnetic to that position, to that organization, to that hiring manager. Because people can tell, even if you're really good at hiding that you're burned out, people can tell. She's not in it to win it. I don't know what's going on with her. She seems a little fatigued. She seems a little jaded. She seems a little over it. We want somebody who's filled with enthusiasm, who people will follow. If you're burned out, chances are that's going to show up in energetically. It'll show up in maybe your LinkedIn profile, maybe your CV. It'll definitely show up in interactions with hiring managers, with the people who you're interviewing. So if you're experiencing burnout, time to do the inner work to heal that so that you're fully prepared and on board for this next level position. Okay, so this is a heavy episode, isn't it? It's not easy to hear these things that are missing links, and I, but I think it's so important to talk about because I, I, I think that the more real we can get about this, and by being real, then we can clear out, we can transform those barriers. Because what I know for sure for the intuitive, intelligent people who I work with is that you have a heart's calling. There's something inside of you that's calling for the next thing. Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. Otherwise, you wouldn't be pursuing a position. You wouldn't be on the job boards. You wouldn't be doing the networking. You wouldn't be trying to figure this stuff out. So we have to start by trusting that the calling in your heart is real and it's legit. That's foundational. It's foundational. All right, so <clears throat> the next missing link has to do with trauma. It doesn't necessarily even have to rise to the level of clinical trauma, like a diagnosis, but let's be honest. There are things that happen in the workplace. There are things that happen in life they might be considered micro traumas, but over time, those experiences build up in your physical body, in your psyche, in how you understand yourself and how you understand the world of work. And unless and until you really look the trauma in the eye and it doesn't have to be a long drawn out process, but unless and until you look the trauma in the eye, name it and transform it. That's going to be a big missing link between you and the next thing. It's one of the number one things that people, they, they don't ever come in to me and say, hey, doc, I've got trauma around my work life. I had some really crappy things happen to me. I got fired. I got reprimanded. Joe stole, stole my ideas for years and got away with it. And it doesn't, like these traumas, when you, I work with emotionally intelligent people and we're so, as a group, so sensitive to the energies that come at, come at us. They feel like darts in our system sometimes. You can feel it. You can feel the dart in your back, the dart in your neck from somebody saying something. It could be a, a comment in passing. 
It's not, oh, it was a joke or it didn't mean anything. Well, it does. When I feel it, it does mean something. And some people would say to you, well, grow a thicker skin or don't wear your heart on the, your sleeve. But regardless of where you choose to wear your heart or if you choose to grow thicker skin or not, whatever those events are in your history that have created the conditions for you to contract, for you to hesitate, for you to be careful with yourself, to guard yourself, it's completely appropriate for you to do that. But just as if you had a broken arm, you would go to the emergency department and you would have an x-ray and you would have the arm set and you would maybe have it casted or braced. So too is the case with these corporate level traumas. It's really important. Mental health is health. And when you're looking at finding your next level position, here's the thing. It's who you become in the process. So that's why I said earlier, what's gotten you to the place that you are is necessary, but it's not sufficient to get you to the next level. You have to do the inner work. I mean, excuse me, you don't have to do anything. You get to decide to do the inner work. But if you decide to do the inner work, then you're going to reap the benefits of that inner work. And there are some people, quite frankly, who are not willing to do the inner work. I don't want to bear my soul, they say. Okay. Then you're going to keep, likely keep struggling with the same things you've been struggling with. It's not for me. It's for you. It's for your progress. It's for you living into your highest potential that brings you into a place of stepping in to that next level of leadership, that different seat at the table who you become in the process. And that's largely the work that I do with people. Again, they don't come to me and say, hey, you, you might now actually that I've been talking about this, but generally speaking, they'll come and say, Robin, I know you're really good at helping executives land their next level positions. Will you help me? And I say, yes, of course, if I can help, I will help. Um, and in that process of aligning them, with their next level position, with the vision of what that is. We usually uncover some of the experiences that they've had, which in my mind are akin to soul loss. So this is this job search right now. This job search right now is more about, excuse me for a second. It's, it's more about who you become in the process from the soul, from the inside out. So we also have to look at the soul level of that. All right, corporate trauma. The last one is this. And I was trying to think about how to conceptualize this last one for you all. And my, my wisdom, my, my intuition just kept on saying, it's something that you're hiding. And I was like, that doesn't sound like, does anybody... I mean, I guess some people consciously hide something about themselves that they don't want their future employer to know. But some, most of the time, I think it happens unconsciously because we make up a story that has nothing to do with this job. So as an example, um, I worked with somebody who went through bankruptcy earlier in her career, and now she's, she's at a high level of leadership as a consultant, and now she's looking for a C-level position. And she it wasn't directly related to the C-level position at all, but we carry, it's, it's not even the experience of bankruptcy, it's the meaning that we assign to it. It can be shame. And shame is one of the most debilitating human emotions, probably the most debilitating human emotion on the planet. Brene Brown you know, has talked about shame for years and years, about that wash that there's, I'm bad, I'm broken, I'm wrong, which is different from guilt. Does this make sense? So at a core level, to really step into that next level, level of leadership, I would, really, I would really think that you would want to take a look at as hard as it is, 
look at those things that you're covering up that you've set aside and said, well, it, it's not related to my job. But because you bring your whole self to whatever you're in, it is related, even if it's tangentially related. So we have to clear the shame as well. And if you don't know how to clear the shame, that's okay, I do. And there are people like me who do know how to clear shame from your system. So bottom line for this, again, there are four major areas um, that, are, that I found to be missing links, competing priorities, burnout, corporate trauma, sometimes clinical trauma as well. And then that core emotion from hiding something, that core emotion of shame is something that really has to be looked at in terms of transforming so that you bring your whole self and your best self to the job search. And not just to the job search, to the world, because that's what's really required and being asked of us right now as leaders is get yourself lined up with your highest potential. Bring your best self, bring your best contributions to the world. That's what's required right now. And that's the calling that a lot of the leaders who I work with feel in their heart is I'm meant for something more than this. I'm not sure what that is. Sometimes, sometimes they are very sure what that is. But the missing links, the things that's gonna, the thing that's gonna slow them down in connecting with that next level are the the issues that I brought up today. All right. So that is all the time we have today. I am excited to share that I've just announced I'm opening the McKay Academy of Actualization for leaders who are ready to create a new world for themselves and for other people by living out their most deeply held dreams. And in that academy, my students are learning the methodologies that I've taught for years and years that I developed over the course of my life that have brought amazing results to myself and to the people who worked with me privately. So this is an opportunity for those of you who don't need to work with me privately to be able to work with me consistently to learn some of the practices. Who am I kidding? Not just some, all of the practices, all of the philosophies, the ways of thinking that I've used to develop my, my practice, my life, it's all the good stuff. So I'm excited to announce that and you'll be hearing more and more about that. If that's something that you would like to get information on and get on the wait list on, we'll drop the link to the wait list in the show notes so you can do that, all right? So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and close out for today. It's been a joy to be here with you and I will see you on the next episode.